Hey, welcome back to my videos. Um, this is my second video of, of me actually on the screen. And I, I quite like these kind of videos, so I'm going to do some more of these. Um, if you watched my last video, that was a, a summary of what holistic health is. Um, it's physical, mental, and spiritual. And so in, these, in this video, in the next two, I'm going to go a little more in detail about what makes those up. So this one's going to be about physical. Um, so let's get started. There's In my last video I talked about there being four main fundamentals of physical health. Um, so I'm kind of going to expand on that this time. There's going to be a couple more than that. So we're going to start with sleep. Um, so I'm just going to give a couple guidelines and just talk about sleep a little bit. So my first thought when talking about sleep is that a lot of, it's very underrated. Um, people think that they don't need that much sleep and they can get by with less because they have been. Well, what that does is brings on health problems eventually. I mean, it catches up with you. And nobody likes to hear it, but you really do need enough sleep. And, and that can vary depending on the person. Some people can get by with uh, five or six hours, the lucky people. And then oh, there's a lot of people that need ten. So generally the older you are the less you need and the healthier you the healthier you are the less you need so um, the general guideline is seven to nine hours but uh, whatever works for you as long as as long as it's enough um, the next thing that I want to talk about with sleep is the times uh, a lot of people can't change what hours they sleep, you know, they work nights or whatever, and I did that for many years until I started working from home, so it's best, this is according to Ayurveda, um, it's best to go to bed uh, as close to 10 o'clock p.m. as possible, and that is so not doable for many people, and you know, whatever, whatever the closest you can get to 10 would be the best. And then uh, the best time to wake up is around 6 a.m. Or, you know, that can vary because, you know, in the winter the sun's not up that early. So I personally, I don't always, I mean, Ayurveda is my, my oh, I love it. It's, and I talk about it all the time. But um, it's hard to get up at 6 a.m., especially if you're a night owl uh, or work nights. It's impossible if you work nights. So if you can get up, mm, gosh, you know, I, I'll stretch it to maybe two hours after sunrise. You're doing pretty good compared to many people. Um, so the next one I'm going to go over is blue light. Um, you can get amazing sleep if you cut out blue light later on in the night like after sunset. There's a lot of people that say that they actually wear those blue light blocking glasses all day long or, or at least the, the second half of the day. And I think that's a little extreme. I mean, not everybody wants to wear orange glasses, you know. But there's a lot of things you can do that will have the same effect, or pretty close. Um, there is such a thing as blue light blocking apps that you can get for your com your computer, your phone, whatever your gadget is. And I use those. I use the... It's called Flux, F-L-U-X. I use that on all my laptops. Um, so around sunset, it starts making the screen get orange. And that really works, really helps a lot. And another thing you can do is 
and get those amber colored bulbs and replace your white bulbs with the amber colored. That helps a lot. And uh, you might have heard of Himalayan salt lamps. I have many of them and I I um, just turn those on later on in the night after sunset and then I'm, those become my main source of light or dim lamps you know I got these two th these look brighter in the camera but they're very dim actually <laughs> this is just a Tiffany lamp and that's just a, a vintage globe with paper mache over it so having bright overhead fluorescent lights is not healthy it's I wouldn't even say it's healthy for the daytime but it's really not healthy at night um, so one of the worst things you can do is work the night shift and be underneath those bright fluorescent lights all night so just a tip that you can a couple more things you can do to help your sleep um, everybody kind of knows about the, this next one I'm gonna go over which is keeping your bedroom dark cool and quiet so the dark part is you know uh, people's alarm clocks have the numbers usually and and I've even heard that that's too bright like <laughs> somehow your eyes are sensitive enough to pick that up um, but I don't let that stop me because I need to see what time it is when I wake up but what I do do is cover my windows with uh, blackout curtains and I make sure it's pitch dark in there minus the alarm clock lights <laughs> and then your bedroom should be cool so by cool and uh, that varies depending on the person because a lot of people are cool when it's 40 degrees and a lot of people need it to be warmer so I I would I'm usually cold so I I like to keep my bedroom in the 70s but if you know if you're not always cold like me then 60s is good it's just 80s too hot yeah people don't get good sleep when it's that hot and the quiet part um this is something that is drastically just transformed my sleep is having a fan or a white noise machine either one they do the same thing um, so they drown out all the outside noise and I, c I can't sleep without it now another thing you can do to help your sleep is meditate and that's you know there's really never a bad time to meditate but there's a great time to meditate right before bed and also another thing that's great to do before bed is writing in a journal and as I've said in all my videos and a lot of my blog posts if if you follow me at all you know that I'm obsessed with journals uh, I think they're one of the most therapeutic things you can do and right before bed they're the best because what you're doing is you're emptying out your mind you're getting all your thoughts and all your worries and all your plans for the next day and all your thoughts out on the paper once they get out of your head and onto the paper your mind is emptier and another thing that journals do is they're therapeutic for the mental health so it's all of these things combined just make for a great a great night of sleep now we're gonna move on to water and in my first my last video I talked about how water and food together are kind of, you know, the nourishment aspect of physical health. But water deserves its own, you know, mention as well because it's, we're mostly made of water and we need it. You know, we need eight glasses a day or more if you exercise a lot or if you weigh more. You know, it goes by your body weight. Um, and the best kind of water in all of my research I mean, I've learned about a lot of different kinds of water. There's reverse osmosis, there's distilled, there's purified, there's spring water. Um, out of those, the best that I've heard is spring. And that's because spring water is as natural as you can get. It's, you know, it's it comes right out of the ground. And 
if they don't mess with it by putting chemicals in it, it's really the best. Um, you can also do reverse osmosis, which is good. I have a reverse osmosis filter in my kitchen. And the only downside to them is they take everything out, literally everything, all of the minerals. So what you can do is either sprinkle some Himalayan salt in your water, just a little bit, doesn't have to, it doesn't even leave a flavor. Or you can buy those, uh, actually I have some, but I don't want to leave the camera. <laughs> it's uh, bottles of the, the missing minerals that you can add back to your water. And you can get those on Amazon. And you really only need a couple drops. So, and then food is the next one we're going to talk about. It's kind of a no-brainer that whole foods are, is what you should eat. Um, try not to buy canned. Canned food is the worst, and boxed food is pretty bad, too. Um, frozen is not quite as bad as those, but frozen is better than... Uh, I'm losing my train of thought. Um, <laughs> so it kind of goes in an order. The worst is canned because they add, you know, like all the extra salt for preservatives. And then the next worst one is boxed foods. Some of them are okay, but, you know, most of them, nah. And then frozen would be the third best because they do retain some of the nutrients still, especially if they're frozen pretty close after they were picked. And then the best, the best way to eat is whole foods. So, uh, it's not as expensive as you think. You don't have to, you don't have to buy everything organic either. I mean, that's, that's another point that I wanted to cover is the organic thing. There's really only a few that you have to buy organic because they have the thin skin. But a lot of them you don't. So buying organic, fresh, whole foods, preferably from farmer's markets if you can get them, because they are cheaper. And you know the farmers. You know where the stuff came from. And you can cook from scratch and makes everything better. I mean, there's a lot of people who don't have the time. And if you don't have the time, it's understandable. But there's ways around that. You can cook all your meals whenever you have your time off and then just warm them up later. It's not ideal to eat leftovers, but some people just you don't have the time to cook every day. But if you do, that is so amazing. So uh, let me check my list here again. Oh, yes. So, as far as whole foods go, it's uh, vegetables, leafy greens, fruit, whole greens, herbs and spices, and lean protein. Those are generally what most of the experts recommend. Um, there's a lot of diets out there, but those are the foods that don't really fit into a diet. They're just you know, the foundational foods, especially vegetables. Um, and, you know, along with eating healthy, there's also the, the things that you should avoid, like sugar. Everybody kind of knows about sugar being bad. And that's a hard one to avoid because it's in so many things. It's, But here's the thing. If you were buying whole foods, from the vegetable section, the produce section, from farmers markets, then you're not going to get all the extra sugar and chemicals. So, foods fried in fat is another bad one. In ingredients you cannot pronounce. Um, I have a blog post about the whole thing with ingredients. Um, I won't go too far into detail with it now because I'll, I'll be making a video about that. But basically, if you look at the ingredient list, if you're buying something in a can or a box, then make sure that you can at least recognize the ingredients. 
there's a lot of boxed foods that do have some good ingredients in them, you know, um, organic products, organic ingredients. But yeah, like I said, you can avoid the sugar problem and you can avoid the chemical problem if you buy everything whole. And it does require a lot of creativity and, well, not even that, I mean, you can just buy some good cookbooks, you know. So the next subject we're going to go over here is sunlight. And sunlight is so underrated, it's crazy. It's because sunlight is good for your physical health, that's how you get your vitamin D. Um, you really only need 20 minutes a day. 20 minutes a day with no sunscreen on for at least those 20 minutes. No sunglasses, no windows, so just out in the pure sunlight. It, it does wonders for the mental health. So. If you can, if you live in a cold climate where it's cloudy a lot or rainy a lot, you can buy one of those uh, sun lamps or whatever they're called. I have one right over there, but I don't want to leave the camera. I should, I should grab these items before I start recording. But they're they're really good for SAD, seasonal affective disorder, and they're good for if your uh, circadian rhythm is screwed up. It'll help get you back in sync with the sun. Uh, so s along with sunlight goes air, fresh air. Um, so if you're getting your sunlight, you're getting your fresh air. And if you can't, if you can't get outside, there's a couple things you can do to improve your indoor air quality. And that would be to buy some plants that are good for the air. Uh, yeah, or an air purifier. Air purifiers are good. So that concludes that section. And the last section that I'm going to talk about is movement and exercise. And I, I like to say that they're two separate things because when people think of exercise, you know, they're thinking of huffing and puffing and sweating and straining and suffering and <laughs> That's why people don't like to work out, right? I mean, who wants to lift weights? That's not fun. So, I mean, it's if, if you can find a fun way to do it, great. But um, as far as the exercise thing goes, if there's a couple things that I recommend everybody to do all the time. Um, well, first of all, the recommended amount of working out you should do is at least 20 minutes a day and four days a week is you know what they recommend if you can do more great you don't have to do it seven days a week you don't have to do it two hours a day um, I've lately been just doing like a half an hour a day of specific things and then it, throughout my day though I'm usually standing or walking anyway so I don't I don't worry too much about it, but there's there's a couple different things like uh, walking. Walking is great for anybody. It's easy to do unless it's raining or snowing, which you can you know you can get a treadmill. The tr treadmill that I have is amazing. It's the best thing I ever bought. I, it's because it's it's not electric and it's really small, so it fits into the corner of my living room. It's great. So if you you know, they have those stair steppers and those uh, all the things that work your arms and the all those fancy gadgets. You don't need things like that, really. A treadmill, I think, is the basic. And also, if you can get yourself uh, a rebounder, which is a mini trampoline, wow, another amazing, another amazing thing. Because jumping is just jumping bouncing you don't even have to be off the off of it just you know I have it t 10 feet from me I could probably demonstrate right now but I want to keep this to this the summary here <laughs> but yeah uh, a trampoline a treadmill and walking and then stretching stretching is great um, another one related to stretching would be yoga 
And I know not everybody is into yoga, but it's one of the things that I just love doing. And it's so good for your everything. It's good for your mind. It's good for your body. It's good for your soul. They always say that yoga is, uh, it's kind of like a spiritual exercise. And so is Qigong, if you've ever heard of that. So, um, by the way, this list that I just went through is available for free on my website. Um, it's probably backwards in the camera, but it's uh, the Foundations of Physical Health Daily Checklist. And this is um, part of my free printables giveaway when you sign up for my email list. So you will get this and the foundations of mental health and the foundations of spiritual health daily checklists. So they are, I can kind of show you a little bit here, even though they're, it's backwards. It's got, you know, Sunday through Saturday, all the different things, and you can check, check it off every day when you do these things to make sure you're doing them. And it's a great way to make sure you're getting the stuff done holding yourself accountable and all that so along with those three checklists you'll also get the, these two other ones that I got but if you go to holisticlifestyleguide.com you can look at the the free print printables option or you can get the free ebook which is kind of the same thing only it's an ebook form and it's that kind of goes more into depth with more more words so it's up to you if you want to check out the printables or the ebook. And I think that's about all I wanted to cover today for physical health. This video is 20 minutes long now. And um, yeah, so the next one's going to be about mental health. So stay tuned for that. And be sure to give this video a like down in the corner if you got any benefit out of this. And be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any more of my videos. And thank you so much for watching.